Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 38. The ideas that we developed for the titration of a monoprotic acid carry over to the titration of polyprotic species as well. There's not too much more to work with. The challenge is just keeping all of the different equilibrium constants straight. Let's look first at the titration of a diprotic acid. Here's the titration curve for a 0.04 molar solution of sulfurous acid H2SO3. Now note that this is not sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. Both protons on sulfurous acid are weak and partially dissociate. By contrast, the first proton on sulfuric acid is strong, it fully dissociates. There are two equilibria with their associated acid dissociation constants. The aliquot titrated is 20 milliliters and the titrant, a strong base such as sodium hydroxide, has a concentration of 0.05 molar. Now the first obvious feature is that there are two equivalence points, one around an added titrant volume of about 16 milliliters and another at 32 milliliters. How would we go about calculating the shape of this curve? Well, there are three key points. One is the starting pH, two is the pH at the first equivalence point, this is like a solution formed by adding a salt of the intermediate species, and three is the pH at the second equivalence point, which is a solution formed by adding the fully basic species. And there are three key regions. A is the region between the first and the start and the first equivalence point. B is the region between the two equivalence points. And C is the region after the last equivalence point. And we know how to do each of these calculations now. Point one is just the starting pH. We learned before that with diprotic acid bases, we can usually consider the first proton as being alone. The second doesn't have a big influence on it at this point. Now we could try to solve a cubic or even a quartic polynomial, but we have found that the quadratic approximation with, with water included is an excellent approximation in most situations. We just treat it as a monoprotic acid. Point two is the first equivalence point, and it's treated as if it were just a solution of the intermediate species. Now the intermediate forms have a separate equation using both dissociation constants. Just treat this as an intermediate uh, species solution. Now warning. Do not forget to account for dilution of the original formal concentration. You've added 16 milliliters of water to this, so the formal concentration of the intermediate species has decreased compared to the original formal uh, fully acid uh, species concentration. Just use C1V1 equals C2V2. And point three is the second equivalence point. All of the original acid has now been converted to the fully basic form. We treat this as a monoprotic base and use the quadratic solution with water again. Make sure to use the correct value for Kb1. It's Kw over Ka2. And again, remember that the original formal concentration has now been diluted by the addition of water in the amount of the added titrant. Correct for this dilution. And also, this calculation produces the hydroxide ion concentration. Take the pOH, subtract from 14 to find the pH. And what about in these regions? Well, recall that with monoprotic acids and bases, we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation because the regions constitute a buffer solution. The same thing applies here. Region A, we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation with pKa1. The math is easy. The challenge is to make sure you're using the right species concentrations along with the right Ka value. In this region, the titration is converting the fully acidic form into the intermediate form. And region B is treated similarly. We again use henderson hasselbalch but now it is between the intermediate and the fully basic forms, and we use Ka2. The last region is beyond the second equivalence point. Here we are now just treating the solution as being that of the titrant added in excess of that needed to complete the titration. And we also have to remember to account for the dilution of the original titrant concentration. Now remember, it's the titrant concentration that you're working with now, not the original formal acid concentration. And when you're titrating a molecule which has two or more acid base sites, each equivalence point has the same volume added as the others. Now this makes sense because there must be the exactly the same number. However, it is also possible to be titrating a solution with two or more different molecules present. In this case, their concentrations are likely different and the equivalence point to each one will correlate with a different volume of added titrant. For this titration, the first equivalence point is at 16 milliliters and the second at 32. We can know that this is a single diprotic molecule being titrated. But many titrations are not as clear as this one. Here's the titration of fumaric acid. Its systematic name is transbutene dioic acid. It is diprotic, 
The titration parameters are the same as for the sulfurous acid, except for the pKa values. This time, they are 3.02 and 4.48. Remember, for sulfurous acid, they were about 1.9 and 7.2. These Ka values are so close together that the titration experiment cannot distinguish them. The second equivalence point is still at 32 milliliters, and if you look really closely at 16 millimeters, you, milliliters, you might be able to convince yourself that there's something there. But if you did not know what you were titrating, you might believe instead that it was a monoprotic acid with twice the formal concentration. Here's another example. This is the titration of the amino acid isoleucine. Again, the parameters are the same, except that the two pKa values are 2.318 and 9.758. This time the first equivalence point is observed, but the second is a very poor transition. This time the second Ka is too small and does not distinguish itself. But if you were just trying to determine how much isoleucine was present, knowing the first equivalence point value would be sufficient. A lot of amino acids have their Ka's arranged in this way. It's common to see the first, but not the second equivalence point. Here's another example. This is phthalic acid. The pKa values are 2.950 and 5.408. They're a bit further apart than in the case of fumaric acid. You can see that there is a first equivalence point, but the second one is still the best one to extract the most accurate information. The same ideas extend to triprotic and higher systems but they become more congested as more acid-base sites participate in the titration process. We characterize these as blurred endpoints.